amputative of tangent U DU. Negative ln cosine U. C, amputative of cotangent U. So ln absolute value of the sine of U. C. The indefinite integral or iterative of secant u du is natural log absolute value of secant u plus tangent u plus c. Iterative of cosecant u du is the negative ln cosecant u plus cotangent u. Together with those previous iterative's of sine and cosine, now you have to set it to six. Also on your formula sheet, is that here? Numbers eight, nine, and one. Let's prove a couple of them. Then we'll try using them. What is the amputative of tangent x dx? So we've got so talking about rational functions the last couple of days, how you evaluate the amputative of a rational function. Tangent x would be what divided by one as a rational. Tangent of x would be what divided by one. Okay. So tangent x is the sine of x over the cosine of x. Dx. That looks an awful lot to me like a rational function that we can evaluate its iterative using a u substitution. But what would, I, what would I let u equal to? Make a wild guess. You got kind of a 50 50 shot. It's either the top or the bottom. And like I've said, I'm trying to use the natural log iterative. Iterative of 1 over u du is natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. So it would make sense to me to put u on the bottom. If u equals cosine x, what is the du equal to? What is the derivative of cosine? Second. Cosine of x. Negative sine of x. Be careful on the negatives. If you're doing derivatives and antiderivatives, that'd be an easy place to make a mistake. If the derivative of sine is cosine, the sorry, yeah, if the the derivative of cosine is negative sine, the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. Switching the negative back and forth. So cosine of x is given by u. I need to know what sine of x dx is equal to. But I know that negative sine x dx is equal to positive du. So negative du is the sine of x dx. Rewriting my Antiderivative, I'll have negative antiderivative 1 over u du. I replaced sine x dx with negative du, leaving me 1 over cosine x given by 1 over u using the substitution that I had for me. What is the antiderivative of negative 1 over u du? Continuing our work on rationals from the final, what is the antiderivative of that? Yeah, Luke, you're saying it negative natural log of absolute value of u plus the constants. So that u sub helps me take the antiderivative, but now I'm done with it. Let's put the variable back in terms of what I started with. So it needs to be written in terms of x for my final answer. Replace u with cosine of x. The antiderivative of tangent x dx is given by negative natural log of cosine of x plus c. Very similar to what you see here. It's just in terms of an inner function u in case you have a constant. Cotangent is proved very similarly, so I'm not going to work on that one. Let's try the antiderivative of secant u du. So let's prove using rational functions and u substitution. 
that the antiderivative of secant x dx would be ln secant x plus tangent x plus c. These are just good practice because it helps you review some of your fundamental identities for trig and work on rational antiderivatives as well. This one takes a little bit of a different approach because we're going to multiply by a clever form of one. We're going to multiply secant x or secant x over one times secant x plus tangent x. The top and bottom. I multiply the top and bottom by the same thing. I know this multiply by one, haven't changed a whole lot. Right, so let's put these two ratios together. Distribute secant x times quantity secant x plus tangent x. So that would be secant squared x plus secant x. Tangent x. Secant x plus tangent x times 1 when I multiply the two denominators. Simply just secant x plus tangent x. Now that I've used that form of blood, or I multiply there in blue, I'm ready to set up my u substitution. So take a wild guess. What do you think u is equal to? It's usually just whatever's in the denominator. U is secant x plus tangent x. So therefore, du would be the derivative of secant x plus the derivative of tangent x. We're back from first semester. Look at your formula sheet. What's the derivative of secant x? So secant x tangent x plus what's the derivative of tangent x? squared x. So secant x plus tangent x is going to be replaced by u. Is it du? Just what exactly what I have left over in the denominator now. After I multiplied top bottom times this extra secant x plus tangent x, it gave me what I needed with my u and du substitution. So secant x tangent x plus secant squared x is given by du. Secant squared x plus secant x tangent x dx is replaced by d. Using those substitutions, I have, let's see, I have everything I need. The antiderivative of 1 over u, du. The derivative of 1 over u du is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And since u is equal to secant plus tangent, I can replace that back in for u for my final antiderivative. I'm not going to prove the cosecant because it's very similar. You just multiply top and bottom by an extra cosecant plus cotangent, and the proof is very similar. Just like the proof of cotangent would be very similar to tangent. If tangent is sine over cosine, cotangent would be the reciprocal, cosine x over sine x. Set so the bottom equal to the sine of x, and go Any problems, thoughts, as you guys are taking a look at those two proofs so far? Anybody online? No. Makes sense so far. OK, perfect. Then I'm going to leave those notes up on the board, quickly erase these two proofs, and let's just try a couple of basic trig antiderivatives using these LN definitions.
evaluate each definite integral or antiderivative, whatever we've got here from my notes. What is the antiderivative of cosecant 2x dx? Talk about composite functions. I wager this is a composite function. What's the inner function? What's the inner function in question? 2x. I'm trying to write this expression so that it matches by definition of the antiderivative of cosecant u through u. Antiderivative of cosecant u du. I let u be 2x. I'm getting closer. Let's also figure out what dx is equal to by taking the derivative of u equals 2x. du equals 2dx. I get here and I say, all right, I need to know what dx is equal to. I know what 2dx is equal to. It's equal to du. So how do we adjust that x for 2? Where does this vector 2 go, Chang? How do I solve for dx? Get rid of this 2. After u equals a whole dx. Instead of 2dx is being equal to du, half du equals 1dx. So dx can be replaced by half du. What I typically do is I just put that extra one half out in front because now that leaves me the antiderivative of cosecant u du left over. I have that expression given by my notes upon the board. The antiderivative of cosecant u du, negative natural log of absolute value of cosecant u plus cotangent u plus c. So I'll bring down the one half times negative ln absolute value of cosecant u plus cotangent u plus c. Clean this up, we're going to find a answer. Replace u with 2x, and I think we'll be done. Negative 1 half, ln has the value of cosecant 2x plus cotangent 2x. Right, similar one. Why don't you guys take a minute? And I'll let you evaluate this antiderivative. What is the antiderivative of tangent theta over 2 d theta? I can do this in my head really quick to put the answer up for everybody. Back at the previous example, what would u be equal to? What's the inner function from that expression? Is it theta over 2? It is, yep. 
That's just what Chase said. Thank you, Maddie. So okay. beta over two. Anything. Beta over two. DU. Let me write this as one half theta. Make it more obvious. What's the derivative of one half theta? One half d theta. Take a minute or so, and we'll solve it. Goal is to get tangent of theta over two d theta entirely written of, in terms of u at du. Alter your substitutions to make that happen. Rewrite the entire integral in terms of u so you can evaluate. Theta over 2 will be equal to u using our first substitution. But what's d theta equal to? 2 du's is a d theta. If half d theta equals du. Bring out the one half typically to the front, and I'm left with the antidote of tangent u du, which from the notes over here is negative ln cosine of the absolute negative ln absolute value cosine of u plus c. Negative one half natural log absolute value of cosine of Half theta plus C. What do you feel on those? A couple anchors, as long as you have the formulas, I don't think it's too hard, right? Ones that we proved in class. Mr. Hansen, why is it one half instead of two? Why is it one half? Mm -hmm. I want to solve for d theta. I know half of d theta equals du. So how do I get rid of this extra one half, Kim? Oh, multiply by two. Multiply both sides by two. If half of d theta equals du, it means that d theta is bigger than du. I only need half of d theta to be the same as du, which means that I need double du to make the same d theta. To think about what's bigger versus what's smaller, maybe it makes more sense that way too. D theta is bigger because I need half of D theta to make the same DU. So double DU to make a D theta then. Wait, wouldn't it be two then for the, yeah. Yep, yeah, I see now. This needs to be a two here and a two here. Sorry, you're right. I'm so used to putting a fraction out in front, I got tripped up there. Does that make more sense now, Caitlin? Yeah. Sorry about that. That was my bad. I see what you're going for now. All right. Well, we did a couple of 
And derivatives, let's just try a definite integral to wind up the derivative. Can I erase this now that it's correct and everyone's got it here? Good. Took definite integral using those same trig antiderivatives. What is the definite integral from 0 to pi over 4? Well, tangent x dx. What is the antiderivative of tangent x dx? Of cosine x. Negative natural log of the absolute value of cosines. So value of this means zero and pi over four. So evaluating our antiderivative using our upper and lower bounds. Antiderivative tangent is negative natural log of the absolute value of cosine x. So now we're going to plug in pi over 4 and 0. I had a quick question there. Okay. Maddie, Dustin said be strong. Dustin, Maddie says rude. Mind your own business. Plug in pi over 4 and 0, so negative natural log of the cosine of pi over 4 minus the negative natural log of the absolute value of cosine of 0. Let's evaluate cosine of pi over 4 and cosine of 0. Work from the inside out. You think back to your special right triangles, work in advance map, or you look on the unit circle, what's the cosine of pi over 4? Cosine of pi over 4 as a value is root 2 over 2. What's the cosine of 0 for this next part? 1. So double negative here makes a positive natural log of 1. The natural log of one. Nothing. So I'm left with negative natural log of root two over two. If I expand that using log properties, the natural log of a quotient. When I expand it, it will be one log minus the other log. So negative ln of root 2 minus ln of 2. What can I also use log properties with? This extra square root is what exponent? A log property says that extra power of 1 half up to the front. So that will be negative one half ln of two. Double negative here, so plus ln of two.
this in frame here. There we go. If I read this backwards, maybe we can see what we can simplify this to. Natural log of 2 minus a half natural log of 2 is how many natural log of 2 is left over when I take the difference of these two. A whole natural log of 2 minus half of a natural log of 2 is what part left over? There's a whole natural log of 2. This is one natural log of 2. I take away half of it. What part is left over? It's the half. One half natural log of 2. Why did the sign change? 